Hello everyone, this is Tim Plum, back to tell you a little bit more about PT Games Basketball. So, for the people who may have watched the, the other video, the unboxing, the unveiling, or whatever you want to call it, the, the, demonst the, the base demonstration, I sh this video is shot about an hour and a half later. Uh, I thought it was actually going to be days, but I'm going to head knock this thing out while there's no one else in the apartment. So, anyway... So what I thought I would do is I would go through the rules that are here, and I would go through some, some specific examples of things. I'm not going to cover everything. This is not tutorial. The game, if you watch the first video, the game is so simple, really doesn't need much instruction. But I thought I would go over a few things. So the first thing I'm going to go over is home court advantage. As I described in the previous video, so this is Atlanta. These are WNBA. This is Atlanta, and this is Washington. So when you, when you buy a card set, you get a sheet like this that has home court advantage, fast break values, and pace on it. We're going to cover those three real quick, just generally. So home court advantage, you look at each team's. So in this case, Atlanta is a minus six, Washington is a minus four. And as I had said in my previous video, I had designated Washington as the home team. So, minus 4, minus a minus 6 is 2 points. So, Washington would pick up 2 points of home court advantage. Now, the value is not just the team's value at its ability to play on its own home court. It's, it's also its ability to be um, how good they are on, on, a, on the opposing team's home court. So if you flip that and you said, well, Atlanta is the home team, Washington is the visitor, that would be a minus six minus a minus four, so minus two. So Atlanta, as a home team in this matchup, would have no advantage because it's a minus value. So an extreme example of that this particular season is Connecticut has 10 points of home court, Indiana a minus 10. So if Connecticut were the home team, 10 minus a minus 10 is 20 points of home court advantage. Um, if Indiana were the home team in that instance, 10 minus plus 10 is zero. So Indiana gains no advantage playing against UConn, or against, sorry, not UConn, Connecticut <laughs> at home. But Connecticut gains a huge advantage. Now, what that advantage translates to are events that you can you can influence and that's what's I mentioned just in quick passing in the previous video was this table over here on the right that if you purchase the game in PDF or print you get the same basic information on this page that I'm not able to line up on the camera um, you get the same basic information all of these tables are up here this play mat costs three dollars to buy through drive through card it's a good value. All the tables are there for you know the little bit of tables you need. Everything's there quick and it's organized nicely so you can lay out the cards. It looks very pretty, as you can see. Um, so anyway, so what you would have the possibility of doing as described here in the rules is um, influencing events. Now, the rare play chart has some events that are specific to home court advantage. So again, that, and that would be looking at specifically at those. So the other ones are these events. So the events that you can influence is you could add plus three to a single attempt on, on an offensive free throw, add plus three to a single attempt on offense. That would cost you one point. Uh, you, could chain, you could change the home team player foul call from a foul one to a foul two. That would cost you two. You could force a turnover or steal from an away player. That would cost you two. Or you could block a shot, possibly. You could add plus five to the single attempt uh, for the defense on the home team only. And again, that's, that, uh, that's a home court advantage you would have that you'd be able to influence. So you could decide as, you, as the game is being played, oh, let me, let me go ahead. I'm down by whatever. Let me go ahead and force the steal um, or the turnover um, of that player. For my player, you know, you roll the dice, it costs you two points of events, and you move on. 
Um, simple as that. It's it's is there's an element of role playing to that in that you are role playing. I, I know God is the wrong word, but you're role playing as the home team and having the advantage. You're role playing out some of these advantages, and instead of just relying on a chart or just relying upon some number to mean something somewhere only. This this is multiple events you can influence. Okay, so that's home court advantage. So on the table, the on this table here, on this chart, is the next thing is fast break. Now, I will say, let me back up slightly, not every season for every card set has all values because it, it's just not, it, the way these numbers, some of these numbers are calculated are not available. So when you receive a card set, especially for older seasons, okay, for new, new modern seasons, you know, you're going to get all the values. But for the older seasons, you're not going to see some of the values. And that'll be, that'll be when you get this page, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll notice that there isn't a, a specific column missing. Um, as I explained on the player cards, that's also true of the type of shots. So right now, of course, players can shoot, you know, this particular set. Two-point rim, two-point jumper, or three-pointer. But some some data isn't available sometimes in the past seasons to show was it a close-up, you know, a layup kind of three-point, you know, a three three-foot-in shot as a rim, or was it a jumper? So it's just a two-point shot. So you would see just one column there. Okay, one other thing to note that I did not note in the previous video, but I will note here is so. Quickly, so like Elizabeth Williams, you see no values under three points. So she didn't take a shot, and of course, because she didn't, there's no value there. Now, Monique Billings is slightly different. She did attempt a three, at least a three-pointer, one or whatever the number is, however many, during the season, but it's blank in, in terms of is it good. So she didn't make it. So you automatically know that if, if Monique, if you roll the dice and Monique's shooting that, she didn't make it. So that's that. Okay, now back to fast break. So every team has oops, a fast break range. And that's the range that how often they will, you decide that they're going to go on a fast break. What a fast break does is um, what you do is you roll against the, the team's fast break. So you figure out who has the ball. And then you roll which shot, and then depending on the shot type, they get a bonus or a subtraction um, to the good range. So if it's a fast break and it's a uh, you roll in the rim area, they've got a, a plus five, a plus three inside the jumper, or a minus three on the uh, three pointer shot. Um, and if the shot is missed, then the player has a minus five to their uh, to that specific player's uh, offensive rebound range. Um, so that's that's what a fast break. Now, you, we we think of teams as having a huge number of fast breaks, but when team when the data is actually done for fast breaks, it isn't actually that many. So you can see here the best actually in 2021 for Seattle happens to be only a 1 to 14 range. So only in 14% of their possessions coming down to shoot, were they shooting something that would be considered a fast break? Okay, then the last column is pace. I explained that in the previous video, so I won't I won't waste time on that again, but that's basically how the game game keeps track of time. Okay, home court advantage. So stamina we won't go over 24 second violations. So the way that the game handles a 24 second violation is this. So if you're coming down and you're rolling, okay, and you're rolling the dice and these, you know, the, the percentile, the one to 100 range, um, you keep shooting and it has not identified uh, a shot likelihood result from the ball handle result. Um, after, um, three throws of the dice. So basically passing back and forth some events that are in essence holding the clock. Um, then you subtract 
five from the pass recipient's ball roll, and then that um, ball handle roll. What that's doing is it's saying, okay, you're not passing, you're probably shooting uh, because the clock is winding down. Um, but it's only one possession. So you're not marking, the, the passing back and forth is only taking one possession of time on the clock. Um, uh, note the three rolls rule does not include defense calls for a pass. Also, passes from the defensive card to the same player do not count as passes for 24-second violations. Now, there's a time timeout section here in the rules. I won't go over that. That's pretty straightforward. Um, this particular section talks about the NBA and generally timeouts. You'll see in other sections of the rules, women's rules, college basketball, the rules will describe that particular situation. Remember, the game has men's and women's pro basketball, so NBA and WNBA. It also has men's and women's college basketball. Now, that's only right now 2020, um, 2021 seasons. Going forward, we're going to try and work on some past seasons, but data is very scarce. It's very weird how data is very, very much available in the season or right at the end of a season. But as soon as the season passes and time is, it's for some reason it just disappears and it's not. College basketball data is much harder to find, especially the data I'm looking for, not necessarily just base you know data. This the game uses a little bit more advanced. Okay, then there's a 2.9 section talks about penalty situations, which is the the free throws and you know in the penalty. That again is the other leagues is described in the other pages. So the press, if you wanted to do a full court press, you can. It's described here. If a player is, if there's foul trouble um, late um, and you want to keep him in the play to avoid additional, you, you play him loose. And playing him loose is basically just a couple of modifiers um, where you're trying to, trying to keep the player on the court. Um, there's a section here for intentional fouling. Um, the end of quarter, end of game rules which is um, you can also have a forced three-pointer you can have a buzzer beater at the end of a half or an overtime if a team takes possession of the basketball with no time left and a score is tied or th three points or less the team in possession may use the buzzer beater chart um, as one last shot so um, And that's, that's the way to do that. So, again, the, the base game rules, very simple to play. I, I showed you most of that in the, um, in the previous video. The, the instructions are color-coded against the player card. So if you're looking for something like yellow is the player, on the player card is yellow. Here's rebounding in yellow. Um, we do orange, kind of an orange. For notes, we do blue for examples, otherwise it's color-coded to the card, so anytime you see a green, matches the ball handle area. If it doesn't match a specific area, of course, there's just no color. Um, just don't need to add color for the sake of color. So, um, yeah, so the game has multiple opportunities. It is a di dice-based game. It, it doesn't really play well. Uh, I've tried to, I invented some cards one time, you know, some, some fact type cards and flipped cards and the game didn't flow well for me. If you, uh, I'll do a couple of possessions here real fast to show you that with the dice, it can flow very fast. So I apologize. I knocked the video camera. So this is the, the, score sheet I had from the game that I started in the previous video and just because of this table I'm using we live in a very small apartment right now so we don't have any regular table space this is a table that literally the legs come unscrewed it's the only table we have in the apartment it's it's a two foot round table so I don't have a dining room table or anything right now I can set up and play you know games on so um, this is going to be a little bit more unconventional than most but it I've played, you know, football with on big dining room tables and basically everything is laid out here and I put the score sheet, you know, in my lap or in my hand and it's always, I'm right handed so it's on my right. So the score sheet is right here on my lap. 
game is here. So just to show you the speed at which this can be played um, with base information. Oh, one, one quick note. So you may have noticed in previous, I keep talking about a rare play chart. So the way you get to the rare play chart is you'll see under ball handle, and it's true of every player, on a 100, you go to the rare play chart. It's right there on the card. It's true for every player. Every, every card range stops at 99. 100 is a rare play. Okay, so I'm going to roll. For the sake of argument, I'm going to say I'm going to, Atlanta's going to have the ball four. So it's going to be Candace Dupree, 59, uh, is a shot. 25, so you're looking at which shot. It's a two-point rim. So 97 is no good. You would mark that on the stat sheet. Now, the rebound battle on the missed free throw. Uh, again, it's the charts are very simple. It's literally one to five. So one to five roll, one to five. Point guard is a one, and center is a five, just like standard basketball. There is no out of possession or out of position modifiers because as we know basketball they play three guards they play three forwards and it's just not worth attempting to to i think it's 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 a false dichotomy it's a false modifier to try and modify basketball players playing out of out of uh, position it doesn't there's nothing added Th that kind of basic changes between a point guard and a center is baked into what they're doing high rebound values versus low high shot likelihood versus low, you know, higher free throws versus lower. And those things are baked into the card. Uh, more, more fouls committed versus less. That stuff's in the card. Anyway, all right, so 97, we have a, we have a miss. So roll a, roll a four on the six-sided. So a four is the power forward. It says right there, four power forward, four power forward, four power forward. So the battle is between these two. So Atlanta was on offense, so Candace Dupree Orb, offensive rebound, is a 5. Add 25 to that, that's 30. Subtract the defensive DRB, or defensive rebound, 12. Gives you a 1 to 18 offensive rebound chance. So 98, it's a defensive rebound. Now, I was asked why I don't automatically add 25 to the uh base orb value and the reason is this is as i've done research as these card sets are being in, invented and in things is that 25 value varies slightly now right now it's fractional but i don't want to hard bake in numbers to cards that as time goes on become modified this maybe it becomes a 24 maybe it becomes a 30 who knows i i you know no idea um, of where it may go, but I don't want to hard bake in a 25. So that's, that's why that occurs. Okay. So Allen has the ball 64. It's a turnover. You look at the six sided is a three. So it's turned over to Monique Billings. That's the small forward 31. She's taking a shot. By the way, you would mark the turnover <laughs> on the score sheet. 36, she's shooting a two-point rim shot. 73 is no good. It's a 1 to 51 base. You would look at placements as a minus 1, so 1 to 50. A 73, obviously no good. 6, so the rebound battle is a choice of position. Now, the choice, generally what I do with this is I, I do a very quick scan of who has the best offensive rebound value. Because obviously we're looking at it from the shooter's perspective, right? And even though I'm managing, quote, managing both teams, these things balance out in the wash. I'm not, I don't ha I'm not making decisions that are really influencing one team more than the other. Um, so for the sake of argument, in this case, when I laid out the cards originally, I put Monique Billings, who's a forward, in the small forward position. Yet, in reality, I probably would have switched the two of three and four, but so be it. So, 28, okay? Then that's who will do the small forward. So, 28 plus the 25, 53, minus 14, 39. 
Roll for rebound, 58. Nope, didn't get it. So, Placence, marking a defensive rebound, has the ball. What does she do? A 96 is a defensive check. By the way, I'm marking possessions this entire time also. Every time the ball, as long as the ball remains on the offensive side, that's a possession. When it flips and the defense takes over and becomes the offense, that's when a possession is counted. So you could have all kinds of actions happening inside of possession. All right, anyway. So uh, we had a defensive check from, from Placence. The, the number was inside her defensive range. So that means you look at Monique Billings, the, the player opposite, and you roll against their range. So 75, steal. It's 56 to 100 is a steal. So she steals, mark that down as a stat. She starts off on the ball. Now, with a steal, this is where I may think to myself, oh, let me go ahead and check and see about the fast break. Now, it's only a 1 to 13, so I, I just, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. Not enough of a value for me to go, oh, that's important. So, sake of argument, I'm not going to do a fast break. Okay. So, 28, shot likelihood. It's a 43, so Monique is shooting. 75 is a two-point jumper. So, uh, Placence is a minus one on the shot modifier. So, the number is an 86. She's a 1 to 48 base. Um, you will find players who have um, like a 1 to 100 good range. Now, they're going to be players who made who play very few minutes, very few possessions. And once they're tired, the modifiers start to add up really fast. So that 1 to 100 disappears quickly. So if you think you can stick a mutant player, as we used to call it, in and really affect something long term, it's going to go away very fast. And you're going to suddenly be stuck with a player who is exhausted and turning the ball over and missing shots. And it's just, there's not, it's not worth it generally to, to overthink that. Um, you'll find that type of player who in real life, one, two, three shots, probably the entire season of that type. Okay, so um, the, it was the miss. Um, the re, we'll, we'll just pretend like we're at the rebound battle again. So three, small forward in this case, it happens to be these two. Um, so, um, Monique, 28, so 53 at 39. 73 again. Placence with the ball or with the rebound win. Five. The ball is here with Tina Charles. Okay, 18. Tina is going to shoot. She's a 74 shot likelihood. 04. Rim. 88. She missed. She's uh, good on a rim shot from 56, and for the sake of argument, minus 2, so 54. She missed. Uh, the rebound battle is a 2, so the shooting guards are battling it. So Ariel Aitkins, 13, plus the 25 is 38, minus Courtney Williams is a 22 defensive rebound. So 1 to 16, Washington keeps it. So 16, Washington keeps it now. The way I play this, by the way, I would have marked the missed shot and the rebound and things, possessions. The way I play this is because Tina Charles had taken the shot, the rebound stayed on the offensive side. I just have Ariel I can shoot again. I don't bother to pass or anything else. It's just new shot. So which shot? 95, a three-pointer. She is a 36. Minus two is a 34. 93, not even close. You can almost picture that. A 93... It's like an air ball. You can almost picture an air ball with that one. Um, so a miss. Mark the miss, of course. Mark the possession. A four. Rebound battle is over here. So Atkins took the shot. So that's a... Hines is a 12. Minus Dupree is an eight. So 12 plus 25, 37. Minus eight, 29. 75. The ball is Dupree's. And on we continue playing. That's how fast, and that's what I found when I said that I tried to play with cards, and trying to flip cards that fast, I, I didn't find effective. Um, 
And I'm not, by any stretch of the imagination, ambidextrous. So that's just, you know, playing the game a few times. So anyway, I hope this video helps. I hope it, in, you know, helps you out with playing the game, understanding the game a little bit better. And hopefully you give it a try. Thank you.